I'm Mark Hall Patton, administrator of the Howard W. Cannon Aviation Museum, located here at McCarran International Airport. Flying today is safe and easy, but on today's episode of Barnstorming Nevada, we're going to step back 75 years and see how flying has changed. When we fly on commercial airliners today, we take the comfort and safety for granted. We often do not even notice the pressurized cabins, hot meals or drinks, and flight crews working to make our journey a pleasant one. We would be amazed if we were to step back 75 years and try the same flights we take today. In the 1930s, commercial air travel was still a novelty few could afford. A round trip from Los Angeles to Las Vegas in August 1935 would cost $26, the average American's weekly salary in 1930. Changes in aircraft design allowed for great improvements in passenger comfort. Even so, many Americans took their first flights only as part of military movements later during World War II. Because of the cost, flight was considered a glamorous, exciting means of travel. The importance of the airmail, though, to airline profits meant that passengers were subject to being bumped from the flight if there were too much mail being carried. The airmail subsidies were often the most important income to early commercial airlines. Passenger revenue was not sufficient to operate. The mid-1930s was also the time when the stewardess, today's flight attendant, became common on the airlines. Boeing Air Transport, which became United Airlines the next year, hired the first young women to be stewardesses in 1930. By 1935, Western Air Express, serving Las Vegas, had followed suit. These early flight crews endured the difficulties of service. Planes were small, sometimes carrying only 10 seats. The earliest stewardesses for Western Air Express were acutely aware of the impact of their size. The first hired had to be between 5 foot 2 and 5 foot 5, weigh not over 120 pounds and be under 25 years old. They knew that for every pound of human weight, there was one pound less of mail in the cargo area and therefore less income for the airline. Passengers were served cold meals unless restaurants could supply warm meals directly to the airport for the flights. Coffee was instant and made ahead of time and carried in thermoses. Flying without pressurized cabins meant flying lower over the desert through the thermals and the winds. This led to much rougher flights, providing a vastly less pleasant flight than we have today. We have come a long way since the early days of commercial flying. We often take for granted the many innovations we have in commercial aviation today. It is to those early passengers and flight crews that this video is dedicated.